Our third uh, speaker in this research roundtable is Fernando Saltiel, who's assistant professor in my department in economics at McGill, labor economist, focusing on topics related to the economics of human capital and the economics of education developed in developing countries. Great. Okay. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to present here. This might be a little bit of math for the presentation, so hopefully you can bear with me for now. But I'll be presenting this project that's entitled Early Childhood Interventions and Parental Investment uh, in the Skill Formation Process. The motivation for this project comes from the fact that there's been a large expansion, both in developed and developing countries, in trying to make sure that children enroll in early childhood programs, given that we know the importance of early childhood education in shaping long-term outcomes. And a lot of work that's been done, both in economics and in many other fields as well, has shown that the success of these programs will depend on a variety of factors that range from the quality of the program <laughs> inputs, including teachers, the material that's being taught to students, when designing this program curriculum, and additionally, and this is especially true for children who are particularly young, whether, whether these programs are able to successfully change how parents behave and engage with their children. And the importance of taking these factors into account is to try to be able to think about how parents can affect children's skill development across the, across the life cycle to understand whether these programs can lead to sustained gains in children's skills over the long run. Because something that we have to grapple with when we think about these early childhood programs is that they're short in duration by nature, right? Early childhood only encompasses a few years, and most of these programs either last a few months or maybe a year or two at most. And previous work um, in, in many different fields has shown that there is extensive evidence of fade out of such interventions. So many early childhood interventions have significant effects in the very short term that maybe two or three years after, um, two, two or three years after, even later, those effects have faded. And, and therefore, we don't find significant effects in the medium or in the long run. And the idea that I want to introduce in this paper is to try to be able to think about under, what con under which conditions m might we expect to see fade out in the effects of these interventions. And one possibility that might explain why the effect of the, these interventions fades out over time is that the interventions are either targeting children's skills that don't persist over time. So for instance, I change your math skills in the short run, but those math skills don't change your future math skills, then there won't be an effect in the long run. And we can think about the same thing taking place regarding the impact that we have on parents' investments. So for instance, I make sure that parents uh, read to kids a, a lot more when they're young, and we're interested in improving their math skills later down the line, maybe those changes in reading to their children aren't really leading to changes in their math abilities over the long run. So I'll be a bit more specific in a little bit, but that's what I'll be having in mind today. And the main research question I'll be trying to answer in the about 12 minutes that I have left is how can early childhood interventions lead to sustained gains in children's skills by changing short-term inputs? So that's the main thing that I want us to think about um, for the rest of the presentation is that these early childhood <coughs> programs are short in duration by nature, so most of them can aim to have an impact in the short run. And what we're after often with these interventions are sustained gil gains in children's skills. So how can, they, how can that be achieved? Only by changing these short-term <coughs> inputs. So I'm gonna give a little bit of math for now. Hopefully it won't be uh, too much, but what we'll have in mind, and, and the next slide I think will make things a lot clearer, is I want us to be thinking about our, <laughs> apologies for this, I want us to be thinking at least about a randomized early childhood intervention. So some children are assigned to a treatment group, some children are assigned to a control group. And this intervention is gonna, gonna have two goals. One is to change parents' investments, to make sure that parents invest more and better into their children. So we're just gonna use some Greek letter notation, theta i. And then in changing, and this is something that I much appreciate about the previous work, children changes multi-dimensional skills. So now there's a lot of recognition across a variety of fields that we shouldn't just think about cognitive abilities, and even so we can decompose different cognitive abilities, but we might also care about non-cognitive skills. So we hope that these interventions can shift children's multiple skills. So when we have these interventions in mind, we're gonna look at a randomized intervention that aims to change parents' investments and their multi-dimensional skills. So now, hopefully this will make the, the idea a bit more accessible, in order to get started with where I'm going, we can think of an initial early childhood intervention that in the short run is going to aim to change parents' investments. So this takes place in a particular time period, let's say, for instance, age four, and then parents might change their investments in their kids as a response to the intervention. A lot of these interventions have components where the practitioners um, aim to engage the parents, they have workshops, they have meetings, and they kind of teach them better techniques or techniques that can help, um, help them better invest in their children. But the end goal of these interventions isn't just to change parents' investments, it's to change children's skills. So what we hope will happen with this intervention is that children's skills will be changed. How can this happen? Well, there can be a direct effect of the intervention. 
So we deliver better materials, the teachers are better, there's better engagement with the children, and there's a change in their skills. But the children's skills might also be changed indirectly. And this is kind of what I'm bringing to the table here. How can these skills be changed indirectly? Well, the intervention may change parents' investments. And since we know that parents who invest more in their children change their skills, these two pathways might explain the effect on skills. So here we have a direct effect. There's an early childhood intervention that affects children's skills, and an indirect effect where we achieve success also by changing parents' investments. So for now, the arrows are very easy. And after this period, the intervention is going to be over. So now I want us to think about the long term. What could be happening in the long term here? And so what I have in mind is that we're going to think about parents' investments further forward. So now the intervention has finished. What's happening in the next year or maybe a couple of years from now? This intervention could have had a lasting effect on parents' investments. You were exposed to some teachers. You were exposed to practitioners. You were exposed to a particular program. So you change how you engage with your children altogether. But in the very long run, what one would ideally be after, I know this is very hard to achieve in the field, so some of this is a, is a bit theoretical, is how can we change children's skills over the very long run? And what I'll aim to this, do in this project is to understand how that can happen in this whole uh, process. So now there's going to be a lot of arrows in the final slide here. So the question that I'm after in, in, this, in this project is to see how can we change children's long run skills by changing only the short-term inputs, because that is the thing that, that practitioners or people in the field have the ability to change. Ideally, one would deliver these gains independently in the long run, but we want to see how can we achieve better uh, outcomes in the long run in skills by changing these short-run inputs. And I'm going to focus on a particular set of arrows. How much time do you have left? Um, seven minutes. Okay, great. I'm going to focus on one particular set of arrows. <laughs> Let's say your intervention changes parents' investments in the short run. How can that lead to children's skills in the long run? Well, one way through which that can happen is your parents invested more when you were little, you had higher skills when you were little, and higher skilled kids when they're little, they're more likely to be higher skilled in the long run. And the key of multidimensional skills here that's very nice is if we think of these skills as being multidimensional, your parents invested more, you have higher math skills. Your parents invested more, you have higher non-cognitive skills. And the question then is, how did your math skills here and non-cognitive skills here affect your math skills here? So when you bring in many skill dimensions, we can start thinking about any change that we have on parents' investments shaping multiple skills, which can lead to long-run effects on children's skills. So I'm going to skip the even more mathy part that I still had as a, as a leftover in the slide, mostly because I don't have time. So I will tell you, I will tell you about uh, how I implement this framework. I will be studying an intervention uh, implemented by Save the Children that is called the Early Years Preschool Program that, that is targeted at four-year-old children in Bangladesh. So what this program aims to do is to provide age-appropriate curriculum by trained teachers along with delivering parental and community engagement, which we have seen in many of the previous talks today. So this program, once again, aimed at four-year-olds in Bangladesh, lasted one year in 2018, and we will have information both in a short-run follow-up and in a medium-run follow-up to assess the impacts of this intervention. So to tell you a little bit more about EYPP, this program was carried out five days a week for two-hour sessions in classrooms with about 15 to 20 students. The program was relatively cheap because it took place in existing government primary schools, and these teachers already worked at these pre-primary schools. So the teachers were mostly teaching five-year-olds, and now they were asked to teach four-year-olds. So to do so, they were trained for five days, where they were exposed to child development techniques and behavior management of the children, and they were also exposed, or part of the treatment, was to have a no-cost material development for workshop for teachers, where they would um, create shape cards, blocks, puzzles, etc., all types of activities that are aimed to stimulate uh, children's skills de development. And lastly, the program uh, includes a number of stimulating activities that include singing, rhyming, storytelling, and free play. The other critical component of this intervention, which is what's quite interesting and relevant to the framework that I introduced, is that teachers are holding monthly parental meetings to improve parenting techniques. So in these monthly meetings with the parents, the teachers will highlight skill development strategies such as how to um, better listen and talk to your children, how to read to them, and how to count uh, and engage in sorting activities with your children. And to tell you a little bit about the surveys, um, there were three surveys, one that was carried out on baseline in December 2017 before the intervention, one at midline at the end of the intervention, so it was in December 2018, and then one at end line, which is in December 2019, so a full year after the program had finished. And what I'm after is to see, do we see effects in end line, and if so, what are the reasons driving that? So here we have an extensive set of skill measures where children are gonna be taking assessments in the three survey rounds, 
These skill measures cover a wide range of skills. So we have information on their literacy, numeracy, their motor development, and their socio-emotional development. So here we're looking at four categories of skills. So this is seriously taking into account the, the possibility that children have multiple skill dimensions. Also, we're gonna have information on parental investment. So across the three survey rounds, um, this, the survey team has asked parents um, a number of questions regarding their monetary investments, which cover the number of books and reading materials they have for their kids, as well as the writing materials they have for their children. The time investments, how much time do they spend reading books, telling stories, singing songs, playing games with the kids, as well as some information on their parenting style, whether they hit, spank, or criticize their children. So these sets of measures uh, fit in well with what I showed you earlier in the graph because we have multiple skills and we have information on parents' investments. Okay, so that's kind of the main setup. Um, then here, I'm just mostly showing you that the intervention was well carried out. There's, there's balance on covariates at baseline. About 1,000 children were in the treatment group and about 850 children were in the control group. Now, in the really last three minutes that I have left, let me, get, uh, let me get into the impacts. So here we're looking at the effect of the intervention on children's short-run test scores. So what happened by December 2018, as the intervention was finishing, here we're looking at the effect on math skills, and in particular, like, math exams. So were children getting better at, at addition and subtraction? We see effects of about 0.2 standard deviations. Were they getting better at sorting and classification? Were they getting better at identifying different shapes? So we see pretty significant impact across a number of categories. Similarly, we see significant impacts on children's literacy skills as well here. So we see uh, significant effects both on their math and their literacy skills in the very short run, right after the intervention ended. And similarly, we will see very strong effects on socio-emotional skills here of, of about 0.3 standard deviations, as well as effects on their motor development skills of about 0.2 to 0.3 standard deviations. So in the short run, this intervention was very successful. Now let me put together all this information in one summary slide. This basically shows us that in the short run, the intervention significantly increased these four skill dimensions with a larger effect on socio-emotional skills. And the thing I want to highlight is that it also had a significant effect on parents' investments in their kids. So parents were investing more in their children across the categories that I mentioned before by about 0.3 standard deviations. So going back to the framework, if you remember the, the simple slide with two sets of arrows, what I'm trying to understand is how much of the effects on math skills was due to the intervention directly or how much of it was due to parents investing more in their children. So that, that's what we're after, and I'm gonna show you that decomposition very quickly. Let's forget more math. Let's just go into to the, to the figure. Hopefully, uh, this is a bit more straightforward. So here, what I'm, what I'm doing is to decompose how much of the effect on socio-emotional skills came from the intervention directly versus how much of it came from changing parents' investments. And what we're seeing here is about 20% of the effect came through changing parents' investments. So because the intervention changed uh, parents' investments and those investments improve kids' socio-emotional skills, that drives part of the overall effect. So in the very short run, it seems that most of the effect was driven directly by the intervention. One more minute, maybe? Uh, yeah. If you're being generous, thank you. Okay, so, so part of the effect is driven by parents' investments. Now we're interested in the long run, how much of the effect on long run skills could be driven by parents' investments. <laughs> but before I get there, let me show you the effects of the intervention on kids' skills at the end of 2019. So this is a full year after the intervention ended. Is this intervention still having sustained effects on children's skills? And here we still see sustained effect on children's math skills, their literacy skills across most of these categories, and we also see effects on their motor development skills and very uh, impressively, very sustained effects on socio-emotional skills, which is quite interesting and important, at least for the types of questions that I study. So to wrap up, or sorry, to summarize the main effects we've seen so far, these blue lines are showing you the short-run effects of the intervention, the yellow lines are showing you the long-run effects of the intervention. We see intervention had effects both in the short and the long run, which seem to be fading out a little bit, but not too much. And parents had still changed their investments one year after intervention. So now I'm gonna put all of this together, and what I'm particularly after, and the next figure is gonna have a lot of bars, so I'm gonna try to provide some clarity, is how much of the effect, let's say, on socio-emotional skills fully after the intervention ended, so in December 2019, is driven by all of these intermediate things that I showed you. So now, Let's just focus on the first set of lines here, okay? So what I am after here is to try to explain how much of each of these components explained the overall effect. Maybe let's go here. How much of each of these components explained the overall effect on socio-emotional skills? So to be clear here, these socio-emotional skills increased by 0.3 standard deviations, which is a lot. This is a very sizable increase in this literature. And what this is after is to say, okay, how much of the effect came from the fact that parents invested more in the very short run and those investments increased 
children's short run skills, which then increase long run skills. So if you invest more in the short run, you improve your kids' skills in the short run, and then that means that you're more skilled in the long run. And these four, gra four bars here are showing you the overall contribution of parents' investments <coughs> in the long run skills, which seem small, and I will talk about this in the last two seconds I have left, but this explains about 30% of the overall effect. So even just changing parents' short run investments explains about 30% of the sustained effect on children's <coughs> long run skills. And that's kind of the main point that I want to make here. If these interventions manage to target the critical inputs in the short run that deliver this like, uh, virtuous cycle of skill development, you can end up with long-run effects on children's skills. Lots of numbers, maybe too many for, for, for this presentation, but thank you very much for your time. Much appreciated.